Here are the top five underrated but awesome common items in D&D. Number one, Mastiff. So a Mastiff is a dog, and by God, it is a fucking good boy. For just a 25 gold investment, that's half the price of a potion of healing, you get a pet with a carrying capacity of 195 pounds, which is already pretty good. It's enough to carry a few weapons, armor, supplies, or even a small creature that you want to take hostage. And unlike horses and ponies, a dog will actually be able to make its way through a dungeon with you, or across difficult terrain. But that's just the start. It also has a passive perception of 13, and advantage on perception checks against things that can be heard or smelled. As outlined in the player's handbook, advantage on a perception check gives you a plus five to your passive perception. This means that if you have your dog with you, you've got a party member with an 18 passive perception if something can be heard or smelled. That is an amazing lookout and one that will outperform any player character for most of the game. Also, just having a dog gives you a ton of roleplay opportunities. You can teach it tricks, get it to cause a distraction, track down an enemy's scent, intimidate a foe or calm down a scared civilian. But now we get to the real puppy power, because if you're a small character, like a halfling, you can actually ride this thing into battle. Instantly your movement speeds increased from 25 to 40, and you can attack with advantage against small or tiny creatures. It can also bite enemies and potentially knock them prone, and you can keep him safe with the mounted combatant feet. Now personally, I, I don't do this because I would legitimately cry if my DM turned my pet into Clifford the Big Dead Dog, but if you're not a massive pussy like me, this is a great combat option. All that advantage for just 25 gold. And you can even buy breastplate for the dog to increase its armor class, which, you know, keeps it safe and looks fucking awesome. Two. Clockwork Amulet. So Clockwork Amulet is arguably the most broken common magical item in the game. Let's talk about it. It is a tiny amulet, and while wearing it, you can forego rolling a d20 when you make an attack roll to just automatically get a 10 on the die. As we see in the DMG's Guide to Monster Stats, the average AC for an enemy is 10 plus 2 plus the player's proficiency. This means as long as you're attacking with a weapon you're proficient in and your stats aren't garbage, the clockwork amulet should always hit, unless you're fighting an enemy with way higher AC than normal. That alone is fantastic, but you can also just break the game by getting a ton of these. You see, clockwork amulets are cheap, common, reset their magic each dawn, and don't require attunement. This means you can carry like 50 and just cycle through them, guaranteeing a hit on every single attack. Congratulations, you'll never miss an attack again. At least until your DM works out what you're doing and, and starts giving every monster insane AC. But you know, you've got to respect the cheesy tactics when they come up. But even without this exploit, and bearing in mind that you can never crit with a clockwork amulet, it is still fantastic. Sometimes in D&D, you just need to hit. Maybe you're a rogue who needs to get off some big sneak attack damage, or an enemy's nearly down and you want to finish it off before it gets another turn. Clockwork amulet says no to the dice gods and puts the power back in your hands. Who Wants to Be a Dungeon Master is sponsored by DiceGeeks.com. Monty, here is your final question for one million in-game gold. What is the highest CR demon in D&D 5th edition? Okay, I believe the answer is a small rainbow-colored chicken egg. <laughs> no, Monty, it has to be on the board. Sorry, I, I, I made a mistake. I mean, the answer is, as the sun rises, you find yourself weeping, holding a dead rabbit. No, that is not an answer. That is a plot hook. Are you reading something right now? Oh, good lord, no, no, no. Hey, I was, he's uh... got the Dice Geeks random tables on his phone. Uh, I didn't mean, I... That is cheating. Everyone knows the book of random tables is the ultimate cheat sheet for DMs. It's got everything you'd ever need. And for only three dollars. Oh, all right. Yes, but how about I give you over 30 dungeon maps and we forget the whole thing? We all know you can download maps for free from the Dice Geeks website. Take them away, boys. No, no, get back! <laughs> Serves him right for murdering me last time. Always have the answer when you're DMing with Dice Geeks Books of Random Tables. Get your digital or hard copy and your free maps by following the link below. Three. Moon-touched sword. 
So the Moon Touch Sword is an awesome magic item that sheds bright light at a 15 foot radius and dim light at 15 foot more while unsheathed. First of all, that's cool. It's basically a lightsaber and it works with any sword. Secondly, it opens up some really powerful strategic options when fighting in the dark. Example, you run up to an enemy, attack them, and then sheathe your sword with your free interact with object action. Now it becomes dark again and your enemy is attacking back at disadvantage and can't make opportunity attacks because they can't see. Another option is to have your frontline fighter attacking enemies with the sword when it's dark out and have your ranged spellcasters and archers outside the range of the light. They'll be able to see the enemy illuminated by the sword, but it won't be able to see them, meaning all their attacks will be coming in at advantage. Then there's also the fact that it's a free torch in dungeons that never runs out of gas. It's never a bad thing to basically have the light cantrip on hand for free. But best of all, the Moon Touch Sword is the only magic weapon that is of common rarity. And in D&D, being a magic weapon matters. Suddenly, powerful early game enemies like werewolves, whites, wraiths, and even others that don't start with the letter W are beatable, simply because the Moon Touch Sword overcomes their resistances and immunities. Careful players often get their weapons silvered for 100 gold in case they encounter these types of creatures. However, getting a Moon Touch Sword is almost always better. It costs the same or less, has additional utility as a glow stick, and overcomes more resistances and immunities. 4. Enduring Spellbook Okay, I know this is simple, but it is so important. Losing your spellbook as a wizard sucks. If it gets destroyed, like say by a fireball while you're holding it, you lose every spell in there. The spells you've prepared that day can be copied into a new book, but every other spell you've collected across the entire game is fucking gone. Also, if your DM is super strict and you ever get thrown into a lake or go adventuring underwater, you're gonna run into problems because your spellbook is gonna get completely washed out. Enduring Spellbook has your back in these situations. Enduring Spellbook says, fuck you, fireball, I'm keeping these spells. Enduring Spellbook says it can't be damaged by fire or water or just general wear and tear. Just for the love of God, get one. It's so cheap and it protects your most precious wizard resource. Five, the Hat of Wizardry and the Dark Shard Amulet. Okay, so serious question. Why are people not running around in the streets screaming about the Hat of Wizardry? This thing is insane. Firstly, boom. Instant fashion, honey. All the hottest wizards are wearing them. Two, it's a spellcasting focus and you need one of those. But most importantly, free, you can use it to cast any wizard cantrip. You don't need to know it, buy it, have it prepared, or even have seen it before. All you need to do is make a DC 10 arcana check. Even at level one, with proficiency in arcana, you'll be making this check most of the time. That's a free shape water, a free create bonfire, a free minor illusion without having to invest your precious cantrip slots on those spells. That utility is just incredible. A well-placed prestidigitation can do amazing things. Dark Shard Amulet does the same thing, but for warlocks, and is generally better than a hat because it's easier to conceal and less obvious to take if you're ever captured. The downside is that it has the same DC 10 Arcana check requirements, and warlocks, unlike wizards, are less likely to have high intelligence and proficiency in Arcana. Still, it's better than literally any other spellcasting focus you could get at common rarity. And even with a once per long rest restriction, the ability to cast spells you don't have for free should always get any spellcaster's attention. Not only are these items criminally underrated, they might actually be the best common items in the game, except for the good old potion of healing. And like every other item on this list, except for the dog, an artificer can make them at just level two. Remember to check out the Patreon to join in D&D games with the community and like and subscribe. Also, watch other videos on the channel. And yeah, bye.